Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, and of course, this is my channel, Barnum 11970 and to all my Barnum warriors out there, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This is going to be another one of those videos where it's not going to be something that most people will even talk about, but I like to make videos where every now and then I get you to think a little bit and process some of the information that I talk about, see what you guys think about this. Now, the other day, I was just doing my usual thinking and kind of gathering my thoughts about just life in general. You know, sometimes you just daydream and you start thinking about things. And I thought about humans as a species. Now, when you ask the average person who made humans, and the first normal reaction would be, well, God made humans. And that to a certain extent would be true because if you believe in God, and I'm not saying whether you do or you don't, God created everything. So technically, everything that's ever been created would be under God. But if you think of it, certain things make certain things. Was there a specific order? In other words, were humans one of the first things that a God created, or were we a result of somebody else or something else? Now, I know a lot of people don't like to think about these things, and that's perfectly fine. So this video may not be for everyone. But think about this. The one thing I was thinking about the other day was the fact that we have the technology right now, and we've had since basically the 80s and who knows how much earlier, because once something becomes public, you know, that means there's been tests for decades. So we don't know how long these things really are out. But we've had the ability to clone animals. We've had the ability to create so we're starting to get robots that are getting smarter and smarter. So let's say at one point we create a robot that has its own, maybe its own consciousness or has its own artificial intelligence to think that it's its own entity. In other words, it's not just like some robot vacuum cleaner that's just programmed to go around cleaning your house, but something that has the ability to think, reason, and actually become self-aware. Now, if you think about it, if we created that, we're, we are that robot's creator. So wouldn't that make us their God? Now, that doesn't mean we have the powers of God of creating all things. But if you stop and think about that, we were the creator of that particular thing. Even with cloning, we are the reason that that sheep or that whatever they clone is in existence. So that would make us their God. So what if we were created by someone or something else, and it was nothing more than just fooling around with DNA? In other words, somebody having the scientific ability that we have only a lot longer ago and a lot more advanced, and they had the ability. Because if you think of the human species, for millions of years, we were basically ape-like cavemen that used the same stick and stone tools for millions of years with no progression at all. And then all of a sudden, we had reading, writing, we had farming. Instead of creatures that roamed all around, people started to settle, build communities, and they couldn't understand the link between the two. So millions of years of walking around like an ape, and then all of a sudden, having the ability to read, write, music, communication, advancements in technology. And if you understand scientists today, they've even stated that there wasn't a separation, that they said that the Neanderthal, or Neanderthal, whichever way you want to pronounce it, and modern man both lived at the same time. So there was no gap. So in other words, we went from millions of years of being cavemen that couldn't speak, that just roamed the earth and just beat things up with sticks and bones and rocks, to all of a sudden agriculture and modern society, and they could never understand the gap. Well, what if there was another species or another race that had the technological advancements of being able to alter the DNA of the caveman, making it into a more intelligent being. Because if you think about it, as crazy as something like that might sound, it's nothing more than having the technological advancements to be able to alter DNA. Because when you alter DNA, you change the species. 
I mean, you're talking about strands of DNA that can go around the earth hundreds of times that create you, but you only need a piece that small of that, of that whole strand to change the actual species. Now, as far as aliens are concerned, have I ever met one? Absolutely not. Have I ever seen a spaceship? Absolutely not. But that doesn't mean there aren't things out there that we may not have seen or we do not understand. I mean, like I've said in several videos, please point out the air that you breathe. Describe it. You know, have you ever been in love before? Draw me what love looks like. Draw me where it comes from. You know, jealousy, rage, emotions, feelings. You can't describe them. You don't know where they come from. You've never seen them, but yet you know they're there. So I'm talking about possibilities. And if you even think about aliens, we're aliens as well. Because what are aliens? They are basically called extraterrestrial, which means they come from another location. So even if you think about, quote unquote, God, is God walking around on the earth? No, he's outside of the realm of Earth. That would make him not terrestrial. It would make him extraterrestrial, which would technically make God, whichever God that you worship or believe in, you would make him an alien. But like I said, even we are. Because if you know anything about how planets form, they form from the explosion of a sun, of a star, a, a galaxy. It depends. It, it, we come from a, a, an exploding star. So we came from somewhere else got shot out into space and eventually cooled and hardened into a planet. So we did not come from here. We came from somewhere else. And who knows where we came from before that. So I always look at the logical and the possible when it comes to situations. Just because you've never seen an alien and it's, it's, you know what it is? I think that word is just so overused at this point because of the fact of the movies that they try and get you to really think, oh, that's just crazy. And it could be. But if you think about the fact that there are billions of stars in this galaxy alone, and we haven't even visited the closest one to us, and there are billions of galaxies that we even know about, how can there be no other life anywhere else? Especially considering, like I said, we came, supposedly, I mean, I wasn't there. We came from an exploding star, was shot out all the necessary ingredients that form life. I cannot fathom that in an infinite, endless universe, where just in our range of being able to see around us, We've already documented billions of galaxies that have billions of stars, that have billions of planets in them, doing the very same things that we are, that there couldn't be other life. And if you think about if that is a possibility, just imagine another life form that established, let's say, a thousand years before we did, that a thousand years before we became modern man, they became modern. Just imagine how much more technologically advanced they would be. Because look at the difference between the year right now is 2014. Just think 100 years ago in 1914. Look at the difference technologically between 1914 and 2014. Just 100 years. We basically went from people walking around using and also using horse-drawn carriages to cell phones that could show images of people all around the world, to flying in airplanes, to computers like what you're seeing right now. I mean, add another 900 years to that and just imagine where we would be. So if you look at the possibilities, what are the odds that maybe some other race came along, saw this planet, saw the potential of a species, and decided, you know what, we want to experiment. Well, we want to create because we can. Because sometimes experiments and people do things not because there's any worth to it, not because there's any benefit to it. Sometimes people do things just because they can. Like, for example, uh, me being a karaoke DJ, I had, when I first started out, I had seven karaoke books. They basically list the songs. I'm down to two. Why? Because five of them got stolen. Now, they have no value. You can't use them anywhere else. So why would somebody steal them? Well, 
Sometimes just because you can. You know, there you can't explain what everybody else does in life. So maybe that's the case. Maybe they just said, you know what? We have the ability. Let's test it out on them because we're not going to test it out on our own people. And voila, we went from a species where millions of years we use rocks and we use stones as weapons to all of a sudden becoming intelligent, having an articulation about ourselves. And they can't explain the difference. Now, I've said many times, if you watch movies, TV shows, listen to music, things like that, you could see hidden information. Now, if you ever watched the newest Star Trek movie, came out a couple of years ago, um, Into the Darkness, I believe. Well, if you look at the beginning of that movie, the Star Trek crew is on a planet, and they're trying to save this primitive planet from exploding. Supposedly, they got information that there was going to be a volcano that would destroy the planet, killing all the life on that planet. And they were technically not supposed to interfere. They were only supposed to observe. Now, if you know anything about comics, you'll know one of the biggest alien creatures in the comic world in the Marvel Universe is, what are they called? They're bald and they wear like a cape-like thing and just stand there. They're called the Watchers. That they're very powerful beings, but they don't interfere with other races, but they observe them. So in the Star Trek movie, they were supposed to just observe them, but they decided they were going to go down and stop that volcano. And you see in the beginning of the movie, you see Captain Kirk and um, I forget who was running with them, but they were running away because they were trying to distract the primitive people from what was going on. And they had the Enterprise, which was an alien spaceship. It would be an alien spaceship to them, was underwater trying to hide. And you see these primitive cavemen-like creatures chasing after Captain Kirk. And ultimately, when they have to leave the planet, they leave in a hurry. And the, the primitive people see this alien ship, and they're amazed by it. Now, they were running because supposedly Captain Kirk took one of their sacred godlike whatever it was documents so whatever it was was their god captain kirk actually took a parchment so whatever they were believing in and then you see as they see this spaceship come out of the water and fly away they draw the enterprise in the dirt they surround it and they start bowing to it in other words they viewed that spaceship and the people in that spaceship as their new god and just imagine a species that really could barely read and write, that did not, not have any modern technology, that all of a sudden saw something that they could not describe because they've never seen it before. Now, we take things like that for granted. I mean, we've seen planes now for over a hundred and some odd years. We've seen guns. We've even seen lasers. So for us, it's a little different. But just imagine cavemen who are used to seeing saber-toothed tigers and farming or well, drinking water from a lake and their greatest technology was attaching a pointed rock to a stick and all of a sudden there is a spacecraft coming into the atmosphere and men in suits coming out that they've never seen before how would they be able to describe that well what if they tried to make it as flying men winged men, men with wings. In other words, that was the only way they could say, wait a minute, I'm seeing something something flying out of the sky, fire and brimstone, so to speak. Because if you think about a rocket ship, look at NASA. Every time a, a spaceship goes up in the air, you see a massive amount of flames and explosions. And when you see something coming in from the atmosphere, you see it burning up. What if they didn't know what that meant? And they just tried to describe it the best way they could. And it was nothing more than a simple scientific observation from people who had no idea what they were seeing. And had limited range of intelligence because they didn't have the things that we take for granted. Just imagine going back in time with your laptop that you're watching this on. I'm assuming most of you are watching this on a cell phone or a laptop. Most people don't even use a home computer anymore. Or let's say your iPad. Take your iPad, go back in time, let's say just a thousand years ago, let's say 200 years ago, and try and explain what they see. And they've never seen something like that before. All of a sudden, you're showing this handheld device, and 
let's say you have a full battery because they don't last very long, but you're recording yourself. So they're seeing you on the screen. How would they describe that? They'd be thinking it's some kind of magic trick or some kind of Satanism, some work of the devil. So we take these things for granted. So when I talk about stuff like this, a lot of you probably, some of you probably turned it off already because they think, oh, this is crazy. But it's nothing more than technology that we take for granted that maybe back then they had no idea how to describe. That would describe a lot of religion where we talk about how things came from the sky, winged creatures that could fly. What about the, I forget the machine, but there's supposedly in the Bible, a, a, the God's chariot that had like four wheels and it was spinning around and there was fire. What if that was their way of describing a, a rocket ship, a spaceship from another species? Could be another part of the human race. Who knows? All I know is I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that could be a possibility. And if we only stay with one narrow-minded way because somebody else told us that's the way it is, I'd be very careful about that. And that's why one of the biggest things that the human race alone should be concerned about is the fact that the Vatican, which has basically control of this planet, because the way the Vatican works and the reason why the Vatican has the control, they just don't outwardly say it, is basically in a nutshell – I think it was the 12th or 13th century. I don't have the the um, exact date, and that's really irrelevant in this. But the Pope basically made a creed and a claim for the earth that until God comes back and says, okay, Pope, I got this. I'm going to take over. The Pope says he is the representative of God. He is the second in command. So as it's like almost like, for example, if you see the movie Robin Hood, where the that evil uh, sheriff of Not Nottingham tries to become king because his cousin or brother, the King Richard, goes to fight in the Holy Wars. So he's gone. So now he's in charge. It's the same thing with the Pope. The Pope is saying God is in charge of everything because God has created everything. Whatever God they, they are referring to, we can't make that assumption because God is not a name. It is a title because if you if you pray to this, this cell phone, well, this cell phone is your God. If you pray to Satan, Satan is your God. If you pray to Buddha, Buddha is your God. So we take for granted that the word God means what you assume it is or what they make you assume it is. Because if I asked you what your name is, you're not going to say human. Human is the title of what we are. But that's not who you are. You are a human, but you're named whatever you're named, whether it's Sarah or Tom or anything. So we take again for granted that the word God is what we think it is. That's going to mean something different to everyone. That's why when you look at a dollar bill and it says, in God we trust, and you see a lot of pagan symbolism on it, it makes you wonder, which God are they referring to? Because if it was the God that we assume it was, in other words, the Christian God, well, why are there no crosses? Why are there no angels? Why is there no Jesus on the bills? Why is there only Egyptian symbolism and paganism symbols? Makes you think. But back to the Vatican, since he is in charge until God comes back, the one thing that we need to be concerned about is they have, and I've said this in several videos, they have a library of books underground where there are miles of catechisms or catacombs, sorry. That's why I don't edit my videos. I want it to stay real. These books, who knows what they contain? And we're not allowed to see them. Now, these are books from the history of the world, reports of things that may help us discover who we are. Now, I can understand them saying, well, these are very fragile. These are very delicate. You know, we don't want people just coming in here and destroying them. I can understand that. But why are we not allowed to see copies of them or archives of them? How easy would it be for somebody to go in there to take photographs of everything and post them on the Internet for all to see? So we would have the knowledge, but yet not destroy precious old books. Because I can understand as books age, they get very delicate. 
But then again, if you see the uh, the emerald tablets, they were made from a material that even to this day, we cannot understand how they were done. So who's to say some of the older technology might have more of that there? But the point is, the Vatican holds the key to the human species in book form underneath the Vatican, and we're not allowed to see it. And people are not angry about that or not asking the reason why. So think about that. If, if the Catholic Church and the Vatican was nothing more than just a religion, going around preaching love, preaching God, pre preaching the gospel, why would they not allow truth to flow freely to the world? Unless they have more control than you think. Because you're not allowed to see those books. Go to the Vatican and demand you go to see their library and watch how fast they laugh at you and turn you away. Question is, why? And only a person with power can have that ability. And that's why, if you ever notice in any movie where there's a king or there's a queen and they walk into a room, what do the subjects do? They bow. They show their allegiance to their master. Well, if you've seen any president any king, any other person around the world that ever visited the Pope, what do they do? They get down on their knees and they kiss the Pope's ring. What is that doing symbolically? Showing their allegiance. But we take it for granted because we think it's just, oh, they're being nice. You're bowing down to your master. So that's where I'm going to leave this. So my videos, I like to make people think. And this could make people really want to research these things and look more into it. And if you do that, you're expanding your mind. You're expanding your ability to grow. You're expanding your knowledge to the point of learning who you could be. I'm not saying any of this stuff is 100% true. I'm not saying that this is the way it has to be. I'm not saying there aren't other possibilities. What I'm saying is there are more possibilities in an infinite universe with infinite choices than the one that they're trying to program to you. This is the free will puts you in a maze and lets you go wherever you want. They try and tell you this is the way it is. This is the way it's been. This is the way it's going to be. In other words, they're taking the maze and just giving you one strong, long line saying, OK, walk this. You're free to walk it, but it's not going anywhere. It's going where we want it. So when we want to curve it, we'll tell you something different. And that's why you'll see something like them talking about Al Qaeda that supposedly brought down the Twin Towers. And then all of a sudden, when we want to attack Syria a year ago, we wanted to finance the very people that were a faction of Al Qaeda. And we were supposedly okay with that. So they'll change this maze all the time, but they'll give you the free will and the think the illusion of freedom by saying, Oh yeah, you can walk left and right. If you want, you know, even though the world's an infinite maze, we can go all over the place. You're free to walk down this one hallway we've made for you. Isn't that freedom? So thanks for watching guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, leave your comments, hit like and share and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. Peace.